Hello everyone and welcome back to One Soccer. I'm your host for today, Josh Deming, and I am back with our first Canadians Abroad episode of 2023. This one will be more of a recap. We are going to take a look at a lot of big stories that happened over January, a lot of transfers, and of course some current news as well. So hopefully you guys are all excited. And if you are, as always, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub, and let's get into the updates now. All right, everyone, we are kicking off 2023, starting with Alfonso Davies, who found himself on the bench in back-to-back -back matches as new signing Chao Cancelo provided a new competition for Davies in the fullback role. Davies came on at halftime over the weekend to help Bayern pick up a 3-0 win over Bolcom, which helps them stay top of the table with a 12-7-1 record. Midweek, Bayern took on PSG in a mouth-watering round of 16 fixture in the Champions League. Once again, Davies found himself subbed on at halftime while the score was sitting at nil-nil. He made an instant impact, however, whipping in a perfect cross for Kingsley Coleman to slam home. The match ended 1-0 Bayern, and that puts them in the driver's seat heading back to Germany. In this first leg, though, however, Pavard did pick up a red card in the match, which means that we could potentially see both Davies and Cancelo start the second leg. Despite Davies not starting the past couple of matches, I think the arrival of Cancelo will be good for Davies because for the longest time, Davies hasn't had any true competition for that left back position in the Bayern squad. With the addition of Cancelo, there's even more pressure for Davies to be in form, otherwise he's going to find himself starting on the bench. I absolutely love the reaction from Davies. He's used to starting every single match for Bayern and finding himself on the bench to begin matches is something he probably doesn't like, but he had the right attitude, went in, came off the bench and made a big impact to give Bayern a priceless goal, especially an away goal as well. So I'm curious to see how this kind of rivalry friendship can maybe blossom through Cancelo and Davies and hopefully find a way to see them both start together. Jonathan Davis 2023 has been nothing short of spectacular as he's been finding the back of the net very consistently and over the weekend he did just that. He started and played all 90 minutes as a striker in a 4-2-3-1 system and in that match David had 5 shots, 39 touches, completed 85% of his passes and he scored 2 goals. His first one was a penalty in which David coolly tucked away and for his second one he was the quickest to react to poke home the ball midair. Lille went on to win the match 2-0 against Strasbourg to sit 5th place in the table with a 12-5-6 record. David picked up the Man of the Match award and brings his total goals in league on to 14, sitting only 2nd behind Balogun who is on 15. This is exactly what we want to see from Jonathan David. We want to see him become a little bit more of a consistent striker. We know he can score goals, he's done that in league on over 2 seasons, but he scores sometimes in bunches and then goes pretty much 6-7 games without goals. He has not done that this season so far and he's on pace for a record season for himself and if he breaks that 20 goal mark there's probably a chance that some big clubs can come looking at him this summer. Moving on over now to the women's side of the game there's only one place we can start and it is all the issues leading up to the She Believes Cup so I'm going to right now try to recap all the big storylines that have taken place so far. Last week the Canadian women's national team issued a statement announcing that they would be going on strike from the She Believes Cup as a response to the recent news from the Canadian Soccer Association that their 2023 budget would be cut in half. As a result from these budget cuts, it meant that there would be smaller squad sizes, less training, less staff, no youth camps, no home games, and much more, all in a World Cup year. The women also called on CSA members to resign, and the men's national team also issued a statement in support for the women's team. The Canadian Women's National Team and the CSA did meet in which the Canadian Women's National Team ended their strike as they were told it was unlawful to do so and that they could potentially face the threat of litigation. The Canadian women decided to end their strike despite not being paid in 2022. Canada Soccer Business also issued a statement on the matter stating that they'd be potentially up for helping the women financially beyond their usual payments to the CSA. Canadian Women's National Team player reps held a call stating that they are looking for equal opportunity in terms of World Cup prep with a full staff, maximum training, full squads, among other things. Their participation at the 2023 She Believes Cup will be in protest. The tournament will kick off on February 16th and run to the 22nd with three matches in three cities across the US. The matches can be caught live on One Soccer. Canada plays the US on February 16th, followed by the 19th against Brazil and the 22nd against Japan. Stefan Eustachio had himself a January that he will never forget as he lifted yet another trophy with Porto. In the semi-finals, they went on to win 3-0 and Eustachio scored the match-winning goal, setting up a final against Sporting in which they won 2-0 and once again Eustachio scored the match-winning goal, helping Porto win the League Cup. Eustachio now has 7 goals in all competitions, which is a very impressive return for a box-to-box -box midfielder. 
He did, however, pick up a knock that kept him out for a few weeks following the cup, but he did make his return over the weekend. He played the final 14 minutes as Porto went on to beat Sporting once again 2-1 to sit second place in the table with a 15-3-2 record, only five points behind league leaders Benfica. This has definitely been a breakthrough campaign for Stefan Eustachio to be playing at this level with Porto, becoming a starter, scoring goals, doing it in both the league and the Champions League. I love watching his game right now. I'm hoping that the fitness issues are behind him. He can get back fully fit and help this team push on to win some more titles this season. Another Canadian who was on the move in January was Kyle Lahren, who joined Real Valladolid on loan with an option to buy. Kyle Lahren really struggled ever since returning to Belgium with Club Bruges. He will leave them scoring one goal in a total of nine appearances, one of which was a start. Laren was desperate for a new beginning and that's exactly what he got in La Liga as his life couldn't got off to a better start. Laren came off the bench in his first two matches scoring the game winning goal in both which helped Vio de Lead pick up six massive points. Over this past weekend, Laren came off the bench once again and had a few good chances to score. However, this time he wasn't able to find the back of the net as the match ended nil nil. Picking up 7 points in their last 3 matches lifted Valladolid to 13th place in the table with a 7-3-11 record. Valladolid take on Real Betis next and considering the fact that their striker Sergio Leon has not scored in 8 straight league matches, Kyle Lahren could potentially earn his first start in the Liga over the weekend as he looks to continue his great goal scoring form in Spain. I love seeing Kyle Lahren regain his confidence. We know what this type of striker can do. Life in Belgium just wasn't working for him, but he's really found an opportunity here in a top five league, and I think he could go a very long way to helping Valladolid stay up this season. Over this past weekend, Tejan Buchanan was back in action as he started and played all 90 minutes as a right wing in a 4-3-3 system. In the match, Buchanan had 45 touches, four recoveries, he had one shot, and he was able to use his speed throughout the match, causing some trouble to the opposing defenders. Club Bruges went on to draw Union saint gilois 1-1 to sit 4th place in the table with an 11-9-5 record. I really enjoy seeing Buchanan play as a winger in this system. He always does so well taking on defenders 1v1, skipping past them with his speed, and having a go at goal. However, one of the biggest issues for Buchanan is the fact that he has not been producing an end product. He only has one goal and one assist this season in 15 appearances, and if he wants to continue playing higher up the pitch, he's going to have to start putting the balls in the back of the net. I feel very confident that Buchanan will be able to add that final product to his game. We saw him do it in Major League Soccer, we've seen him do it for the Canadian men's national team, and there's been opportunities for him to do it in Belgium where he has. It just needs to do it more on a consistent basis, especially if he wants to make that move to a top 5 league. We know that there's clubs out there interested in him just because of the type of profile he was, and I'm hoping down the line he can get that transfer. It's with a heavy heart I have to give this next update. That on February 6, 2023, a devastating news hit that a catastrophic 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit the southern and central parts of Turkey, as well as the northern and western parts of Syria, with a death toll that surpassed 3,500 people. The news rocked the world, and all we could do was hope and pray, and shortly after, we did find out that both Samuel Adekubi and Atiba Hutchinson were safe. As a result of the earthquake, it ended the season of Hatta Spor as they are not able to play another match for the rest of the season. However, they will not be relegated. And because of that, some of their players will need to find new clubs if they want to play again this season. And one of those players is Samuel Adekubi. Reports in Turkey are saying that things are advancing quickly between Samuel Adekubi to Galatasaray. It is going to be a loan deal with an option to buy. This will be a fantastic move for Adekubi going to a club like Galatasaray. However, I do wish that the move did come under better circumstances. Right now, Leo Dubois is the number one competition for Adekubi, although it is worth noting that Dubois is a right-footed player and he has featured as a right-back for the majority of his career, so Adekubi would be a true left-back alternative for Galatasaray, which could offer them something different. From all of us here at One Soccer, all of our thoughts and prayers go out to those who were affected by the earthquake. Way back in January, we saw Ishmael Kone secure a move to the English Championship, signing a contract with Watford until June 2026. Since making the move, Kone has been adjusting to life in England well. He started five matches and featured in a total of six, helping Watford fight for promotion as they currently sit sixth place in the table with a 12-11-9 record. This past weekend, Kone had a very impressive match against Blackburn. I personally think it was his best performance in a Watford kit, and he got another start midweek against Burnley. He had 22 touches in that match, five recoveries, he created one chance, he won five out of eight duels, and he had one accurate long ball, putting in another solid performance. It's great to see Ismail Kone enjoying his life in Europe right now, but this transfer could get a little interesting next season, as there's reports that he could potentially be loaned out to Udinese. 
whether Watford get promoted and they get a ton of money and bring in a ton of players, he could get loaned out then. Or even if they stay in the championship, a potential loan to Udinese to play in one of the top five leagues in the world could be on the cards. Regardless of what happens, this is a very intriguing transfer and I can't wait to see what Kone will continue to do in Europe. Alistair Johnston is another CF Montreal player who moved to Europe in January as he joined Celtic and the deal already looks like it was a fantastic piece of business for the Scottish Giants. Johnston came in to replace Juranovic and he's done exactly that. He is featured as a right back for Celtic in seven matches in all competitions, playing 90 minutes in every single one of them. Since joining Celtic, Johnston hasn't suffered a defeat yet as Celtic sit first place in the table with a 23-1-1 record and are taking on Rangers February 26th in the League Cup Final and this is a chance for Johnston to pick up his first piece of silverware in Europe. Alistair Johnson and Celtic fit like a glove. This move has been fantastic. The personality of Alistair Johnson going into Celtic has been very well received. He's walked into this role, knows exactly what he's doing. And at the age of 24, if he can continue winning silverware with Celtic, playing in the Champions League potentially next season, will give him the opportunity to even make that next step and maybe one day find himself playing in the Premier League. Lucas Cavallini was another player who found himself a new club as he left the Vancouver Whitecaps and signed back in Mexico with Tijuana. Cavallini spent five seasons at Puebla where he scored 27 goals being the top goal scorer for the club multiple times and with his best season happening in 2018 where he scored nine goals in 17 matches. Cavallini is very excited about returning to Liga Mexi and he had this to say. Liga Mexi and MLS are different in that the style they play in Mexico offers more speed, more dynamism, and more technicality. The global sport is played how it should be in Liga Mexi compared to MLS. Cavallini also defined MLS as an inferior league to Mexico's top flight and he's been very vocal about his satisfaction returning to Mexico and he stated it's very important for him to be in a competitive league so he can be the player he once was. Cavallini made his debut for Tijuana against Atletico San Luis and he was subbed on in the 52nd minute to help his side pick up a 1-0 win as they now sit 13th place in the table with a 1-4-1 record. Cavallini was a prolific striker in Mexico and there's no denying the fact that it just didn't work out at the white cap so I'm hoping the fact that he goes back to Mexico going to a club where he wanted to go to he can find this rhythm back because he's still an important player for this Canadian men's national team. The Canadian transfers keep coming as Theo Corbiano also had a move in January. He was recalled from his loan spell at Blackpool where he scored three goals in 17 appearances and was then loaned out to Armenia Bielefeld and Bundesliga 2. So far, Theo has featured twice off the bench for Bielefeld as they sit 16th place in the table with a 6-2-12 record. Bielefeld were relegated from the Bundesliga last season and they were expected to be fighting for promotion, not relegation. So they definitely need some added firepower and Corbiano could provide just that. There is a long history of North American players finding success in Germany, so hopefully Corbiano can take his opportunity when they come and he can help his side avoid relegation. I personally think playing in Germany is one of the best ways to develop young talent. That is exactly what Corbiano is. He just needs to find a little bit more consistency in his game and I'm hoping that he can find it with Bielefeld. Over the weekend, Steven Vittoria started and played all 90 minutes as a center back in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, Vittoria completed 77% of his passes. He had 40 touches, 4 recoveries, 4 clearances, and he hit the woodwork once as Chavez went on to draw the match 0-0. With this result, Chavez sit 8th place in the table with a 6-8-6 six, six record, continuing their strong season and Vittoria as well, as he put in a big effort to help his side keep a clean sheet and he also almost added another goal to his impressive goal scoring record this season so far. I know Vittoria is the penalty taker for Chavez, but still for a 36 year old center back to score 4 goals this season, I think is pretty impressive. Jaden Nelson is also headed to Europe as Rosenborg has signed the winger from TFC for an undisclosed fee, which is believed to be from 800k to 1 million USD. Nelson proved that he is very versatile with TFC last year as he originally featured as a winger, but he also showed that he's capable of playing in the number 8 role. Nelson will be joining a club in Rosenborg that have won their domestic league a record 26 times and regularly compete in UEFA competitions. This is a great opportunity for Nelson to get used to the European game and help push him to become a regular with the Canadian men's national team. This is a great opportunity for Jaden Nelson, a player who has a very high ceiling to move to Europe with a club that knows how to win, has that type of mentality, and can hopefully develop his game. This is a player who will be looking to join up with the Canadian men's national team and become a regular, and this is a great step to do so. The transfers continue as a former CPL and MLS player join up together in Poland. Dominic Zatora and Marcus Godinho have both signed in Poland for Corona Kielsa during the January transfer window. Zatora has become a starter immediately for Kielsa, featuring as a right back in three consecutive matches. 
Gadinho has been used twice off the bench so far as Corona Kielsa sits 17th place in the table with a 4-5-11 record currently in the relegation zone. It's always great to see a player from the Canadian Premier League move to Europe and find a starting role right away. I'm very curious to see the way the rest of the season plays out for both Zatora and Gadinho. That is all the time we have for in this edition of Canadians Abroad. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, as always, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub, subscribe over to One Soccer for all the best Canadian soccer coverage, and we'll see you next time. Cheers, friends!